Hey, BookTube. It's uh, Pete. Bookless Pete. Please like and subscribe there. I've done all the things you're supposed to do. Um, this is going to be a response video to the Am I Reading Too Much video that was that was done a few days ago by Jack at uh, Special Book Joy at... Sorry. Yeah, Special Book Joy. A great video. I was listening to Steve Donahue, the Dean of BookTube, the guy I listen to the most probably, and he... I've seen the, the the video, the original video by Jack come up many times, and I didn't uh, click on it because I thought it, it wouldn't, based on title, I thought it really didn't apply to me because I'm, I'm not reading too much. Uh, but then I happened across Mr. Donahue's video, and uh, he really enjoyed it, and he really found a lot of value in it. And so based on his recommendation, I... I watched it, and I also watched the other one he recommended, which was the first reaction video by Greg at Another Bibliophile Reads, which is a channel I was already subscribing to. So, uh, of course, I immediately subscribed to, uh, is it Spread Book Joy or Special Book Joy? Oh, man. But uh, I'm sorry I'm getting this wrong because it's a really great channel. She's very, very smart and was really compelling to listen to. So... Thanks for uh, thanks to Steve for for talking about her video because I probably wouldn't have clicked on it otherwise. And now I've got another great booktuber to subscribe to, and she says a lot of really interesting things in there. She starts off talking about, uh, you know, she's coming to the point in her life where she's starting to think about. I think she phrases it as, "You can do anything you want, but you can't do everything," which is a revelation I came to a while ago too. Um, this is just another old guy who's retired, so it's really not as relevant to what other people are going through who are still in the middle of their careers and stuff. I've got all the time I want to read. But I also have a lot of things I in my life I wish I could do. And I retired about a year ago, last April, almost one year ago. Um from a job I had a couple jobs and then at the end I just had one job that I still liked but things were changing there and I decided I didn't want to wait too long to retire because there were a lot of other things I wanted to do and one of them was travel which I'm doing this is an Airbnb I'm in Saranda Albania where I'm basically living the life I could have lived in Seattle at a third of the cost uh, because what I like to do most of the time is sit around and stare at the wall and read and write a little bit and read a lot and mess around on the computer and and things like that and so I have three or four things that I really pursue as passions now um, but I am you know aware that everything you do is you're you're saying no to other things and this is a constant struggle with me and it's it's interesting what she said about uh, different challenges and stuff. I just started the 100 book challenge. I don't know if, did I put that up? Yeah, I guess I did. And I noticed, uh, and I hadn't put a number on it, like how long it would take. I think it might take like two years to do it. And it's just really kind of a personal challenge for me to thin out the, the books that I've been collecting over the years because when I was working, especially the past five or six years, Prior to retirement, all except the last year, I was working maybe 70 hours a week. So at that time in my life, all my thinking was about like how little time I had to do things. That, But I really wanted to, uh, you know, get financially solvent, get my act together financially and, and retire before I was too old to do anything that I wanted to do. So I f felt like at that time I was... Um, really putting off my life to to have a life if that makes sense this is getting long already I thought I'd finish this in like four minutes I haven't even got to my in seven minutes but I haven't even got to my main points yet so but what I found like my aunt when I retired my my aunt uh, was quite elderly as you can imagine you know I, I moved overseas and I keep in touch with her and she's like 
this is like your gap year. This is like your college gap year where you're just, because she doesn't uh, uh, really understand a person not working if they could or that kind of thing. Anyway, I just blips this thing. A anyway, uh, it kind of is because I, what I've been doing a lot this year, my first year of retirement, and I may go back to work at some time, so I, I'm still calling it retirement because who knows what will happen. Uh, years go very fast when you're old, which is kind of the theme of the original video that Jack made. You know, you only have so much time. She mentioned a book called 4,000 Hours, I think it's called. I'd heard of that book before. There's another book, and I haven't read it, so I can't really critique it. it, critique it. It really is something people should be aware of in their lives because if I have one regret, it's all the time I spend on Twitter um, and Facebook. Uh, at one time I had like 800 Facebook friends for no reason, and I... You know, start dumping them out. I I cut it down to about a hundred people that I've actually ever had any single interaction with. Um, but now you go on Facebook and it's just ads and it's just crap and it's just stuff I have to I have to block over and over again because I see these these supposedly directed ads at me about stuff I'm not relevant at all. I, you know, I've never ever in my life posted about redoing my bathroom or redoing my shower and yet I'll constantly get um, you know ads about how to renovate your your bathtub and have a sit down shower in it I guess because based on my age or something is constant and I sometimes wonder on Facebook if when you go in and block an advertiser they count that as interaction and you get more of the same crap you know so that's very irritating. So I go on Facebook and I can't even find my friend's posts. I'm not even sure anybody is posting anymore. Uh, Twitter is just pure evil. And I do enjoy it or I wouldn't be there because... And it was bad before Elon. It's bad in a different way after Elon. I would say one advantage of of that Space Cowboys taking over the the platform is that now, with a few of the changes, it makes it very clear that me as a non-paid, a non-blue check Twitter subscriber, that when I type a tweet, and you can see the interaction of that, literally no one is seeing that tweet. Nobody. It's, it's worse than screaming into a void because, well, I guess the same as screaming into a void. I don't want to get that right. So that's very helpful, a time saver there is because I can read stuff and get angry and realize that no matter what I say about it, no one's ever going to hear it. Uh, but I do spend still too much time on Twitter. I like it for, you know, it's good to be, keep up for it to date because journalists seem to think it's the end-all, be-all. So it's good to see what people are talking about in the zeitgeist. And also it keeps me humble that... I know no one needs my opinion, which you could say the same about YouTube. Uh, but at least here, I'm, I'm trying not to be political at all. I don't want to have a political YouTube. and I. At least if I blather on about books all the time, I'm not really... I, I'm under no illusion that I'm changing the world and or that I'm actually doing some kind of activism <laughs> by just talking about books I like. It just... To me, this seems like pure entertainment, which is why I made a, a, a booktube channel with a you know made-up name and not connected to my other stuff. And no one in, that I know in the world even knows I'm doing it. I'll probably tell them at some point. And I'm going to cut this. I had a lot of thoughts about those other videos. You should all link to them, of course. You should really check out Jack's video. She also has another tag that I'm really interested in in doing about uh, your reading journey. So I'm going to watch a lot of her videos because I think uh, I, I, I really like her ideas or what I've seen of them so far just in that one video. But as a new YouTuber, I don't feel the pressure to um, read more than I have time for. One of the things I wanted to do one of the things I've discovered that I want to do is read a lot uh, instead of other time things I waste my time on like social media 
and that's why I found this little niche of booktube and I'm really happy with it because one of the things I was missing in my life is is people talk to books about over here. So now I'm getting into book tag newbie territory, but as a new booktuber, didn't doesn't really occur to me that I would have to participate in these things. Maybe I will. I could definitely see where that would come into play later on as I make new friends and stuff, but I've always had my own little book challenges and study challenges and things. It's just how I learn things and try them out. You know, I had a drawing challenge where I said I'm going to draw every day for a year and then about nine months after I'd stopped drawing for a while for no other re no idea why and, and I picked it up again. I don't beat myself up over that stuff and I've had a, other challenges where I want to write a certain amount a day. I just started a new writing project and being uh, doing these videos that I've done so far really makes me want to write more which is good because writing is an important part of my life and and just of all the things I could be doing now, reading is one of the things I want to do the, the most. I've always read books that I wanted to read, mainly, but I've also always read books that I've just heard about that, that I had no interest in, other than just the, so many people seem to like it. Like The Hunger Games was that like for me. I had really no interest. I don't really read that genre, uh, YA books or anything, but just so many people that read them, I thought, I, I'll read them. Just see what's up. And I, I don't really jealously guard my reading time that I won't read things that I know are not written for me or that I know I probably won't like because I am generally cur curious about all different kinds of writing and and that's why I'm on here I really like to see what other people are reading and what they talk about it whether it's something I would ever want to read myself so it's kind of a, a vicarious book collecting by seeing what other people are fascinated by and and what they dislike and what they're passionate about. I do. Ha I did have to sort of back off on some of the other kind of entertainment activities I was doing. I used to watch a lot of movies when I was working two jobs because I I could watch them in the background. Of my my second job was work from home, and I could I could just play them in the background, and, and I watched a lot of crappy movies that way. And the movies are. Old movies are really fun to talk about and argue about and all that too. But books have always been, since childhood, have always been the, the biggest part of my life. So I don't know if I can get to the point where I'm reading too much because I, I do get very distracted. And, and like I say, I have other projects to do and they don't really interfere with my reading now. Um, it is, I'm really glad I saw the videos though because I, I could see where that would become a problem especially if you're a person who really wants to try and grow a channel and, and make some money out of it. And I'm not, uh, I'm not, I would never criticize anybody for wanting to do that because times are tough out there and people got to figure out ways to make money, especially younger people. So if somebody's goal for their channel is to try and create an audience and, that, and get to the level where they can make some some side gig money that's that's great but i could see where that would kind of kill the joy might kill the joy for for entertainment you know there, there is some there is something that i think we all have to watch out for not just here but in anything that you do for love you know as moliere said about writing you know first you do it for love then you do it for oh it's like <laughs> It's the writing is like sex. First, you do it for love, then you do it for a few friends, and in the end, you just do it for money. And there is that tendency. I used to blog for this crappy blog service. They're not even online anymore. They took them all down. I think it was called Blog Zing. It was by Jason Calcanis. It was just a horrible experience that I went through for probably about a year. I, did work for two different blogs, a financial blog, which I was not qualified for. Gonna wipe my nose. But the editor there was very nice and she was very helpful and she taught me a lot about writing and she gave great feedback. And there was another, but there's, but I didn't want to do it because I didn't like finance and I wasn't qualified to do it. Uh, but they were only paying $10 a post at that company, so they really just, everybody there was a, 
fake, you know. Um, and there was the, they had they also had a TV blog, of course, which I really want to write for because uh, be paid what to watch TV shows. And the other there was a real prick, and um, I really didn't like working for him. He wasn't that bad to me. He was snotty to me a couple of times, but he would be really rude to other people in the in the group chats and stuff. So he's just an awful person to work for. And but I was writing for these shows. I did these recaps and reviews of various shows, and I just started to hate the idea of watching these stupid shows, which I got to pick to some degree. So I didn't enjoy the process of, of uh, watching TV anymore. Um, it's kind of cultural, like I did the fourth season of The Wire, and The Wire at the time was one of my favorite shows. Speaking of people that make Twitter awful, uh, there's that bully, uh, David Simon, who, who created that show, who's now just a Twitter bully, who, um, even though politically I'm on the same side as him, He's just, he's just an awful bully, you know, yelling at people, calling people fuckwads and stuff, and douche twizzles or all these clever things he thinks to come up with, and, you know, and lords his uh, superior writing credentials over everybody and punches down and just obnoxious uh, behavior that some celebrities fall into when they've never been told no, so... I don't know how I got off on that. But anyway, so I really love The Wire, so I got to do a, a season of that. And and the show Heroes had just come out, and I got to write about that because no one wanted to write about it because it wasn't uh, uh, seen as a show that was going to go anywhere. So they just gave it to me as a junior writer. And I just started hating it. I just hated I hated... First of all, I hated having to give my honest opinion about things because... I'm not a critic, and if I don't like something, I prefer, not always, but I prefer to, I prefer to focus on things I do like. So if there was a crappy show on I didn't like, and I would start to think about, you know, these people are, this is somebody's job to do this shit, and then some, like, punk on the internet goes and, and shits on it, uh, but it was my job because I was I had to review certain shows. I was assigned certain shows to think to do and I was like if I ever have my own reviews and things like that, I'm just gonna mostly focus on things I really like and maybe mention things I don't like in passing, but 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 there's so many good things to talk about that if you're not making a living as a critic where it's you're professionally obligated to give your honest opinion, I'll just like keep silent about things I don't like. Most things people don't like are, are not for them. I mean, I could go on about the Barbie movie, like Ben Shapiro, but I won't because I don't think I'm the, the and I didn't even see it, but if I had seen it and didn't like it, I would uh, there'd really be, what, what would be the point of me complaining about it? It's not written for me. Uh, and that I'm sure it's fine, most movies, this is my philosophy on most movies. I think that most movies are fine. What's the big deal? Why are people so upset about movies all the time? Which is another reason I decided to focus more on reading because people who read a lot seem to be more forgiving of other people's taste. I guess there's this weird, this weird movie culture we live in where people identify people identify with two things. The the their political party or their political leaning and the movies they like and if you don't and if you're not on their team you're the antichrist you know the the other half of the country are the antichrist you know you don't like the right movies you're you're evil and i don't see that in the book community as much and which is why i was happy that i found booktube and i i really enjoy spending time here One other thing I wanted to mention before I wrap up, uh, you know, I'm really glad that I have a small channel because these videos are terrible and I'm not going to work to make them better because really the only reason I want to do this is to be on here blabbing about the stuff that, that no one would sit by and put up with from me in real life. So it's just kind of like fantasy football to me. 
I'm sitting on here giving my opinions, just like anybody else. And people, if they're interested, can listen. And uh, I don't have to bore my friends with this stuff. Um, but she mentioned, uh, Jack mentioned 4,000 hours. And there's a writer I came across. She's a researcher, a very famous Harvard researcher named Professor Ellen Langer. And if you're interested in this kind of thing, she has a different approach to it. I think people probably are aware of most of her studies and stuff, even if they don't know her name. I'll link to one or two of her videos in the in the description too, because and you can really just watch any, just look for any one hour interview by her on any podcast or any YouTube channel, because she always she almost always covers the same stuff because her main focus is a subject that there's not a lot to say about, but what she has to say about it is very profound, and that is the idea of mindfulness. And she separates that from meditation and other spiritual practices. Basically what it is, or this is my interpretation of it, either, anyway, is that she, basically there's three, there's three time periods we deal with. There's the past, there's the present, there's the future. And the past is what we can't change. So we can't dwell on that. The future hasn't happened yet, but what we, where we all live is the current moment. And whether you have 4,000 hours or whether you die in an hour, I could die in an hour. I'd probably die, you know, if I do the Memento Mori tag, I'll put this in here. I'll probably figure out how many books I can read in the rest of my life. But, you know, I can figure out if, if I li live another, Let's see, the oldest humans probably are around 122. I'm 63, so let's say I, I only live another 61 years. Then I could say, well, this is the number of books I can read in 61 years. Fine, and then I could die. Tomorrow there could be an earthquake. There's been major earthquakes here before. Or I could just have a heart attack. Or I could just, you know, take a leap off the balcony. Um, so I really don't know if I can read any more books. I really don't even know if I'll finish this video. So her idea of mindfulness is really, as often as you can, as often as you think about it, focus in on what you're doing, on the moment. And there's a great essay on this by William S. Burroughs uh, called Do Easy. There's also a film of adapted from the essay. I guess he calls it a short story, but it's really an essay. Uh, by Gus Van Sant. It looks like it was probably his uh, student film he did called Do Easy, uh, which is kind of another way of, of looking at mindfulness. Just whatever you're doing, pay attention to it. You know, pay attention to your reading. If you're doing a video, pay attention to it. You know, I, in uh, Greg's uh, post, he mentioned he's going on walks and listening to audiobooks. I do that sometimes, and I also listen to... I also, other times, I just take a walk and I don't put anything in my ears, which is good too. I do try and, much as I can, just try and focus on what I'm doing. Focus on the book I'm reading, focus on, like I said before, when I used to have those two jobs and I'd watch the movies in the, in the corner of my eye or just listen to them. It's really not the way to do it. Uh, you, I really try as much as possible, and I fail at it every day. <clears throat> sit down and do what I'm doing. If I'm making breakfast, I just make breakfast. If I'm listening to my Spanish, doing my Spanish uh, learning methods, and, and that's going to come up in another video that I'm planning to, I try and concentrate on the Spanish. I try and concentrate on what I'm doing. Because you only have this moment to live in so whatever you're doing, whether it's playing video games, I mean, if you're playing a video game, just really play it. If you're reading a book, just really read it. That's my final word on the topic. Uh, I'll, I'll just say bye. Thank you again, BookTube. Please like, subscribe, uh, do all the things that I'm supposed to tell you to do, which I'm going to stop doing, but I think it's kind of funny at this point to do it. Anyway, we'll talk again.